All right. Lord put this on my heart a couple days ago. And I failed to speak on it then. I, I can make excuses. Oh, I've had a lot to do with work. I've had a lot on my plate with work. Because I was kind of convicted today of, well, that's what I wanted you to talk about in the first place with work. So, Heavenly Father, I just ask you to put your words in my mouth. Holy Spirit, take a coal from the altar and touch my lips. Touch the lips of the servant of God. That you would be heard. That your words and your truth would be spoken. And that you would have your way. In Jesus' name. Alright. So, it says, do not work as if you work for man, but work as if you work for the Lord. And it also says, whether you eat, whether you drink... Whatever things you do, do them unto the Lord. So, if you work, we all have jobs. We all got to go to work. Well, we don't got to. We get to. But I'm not going to split that hair right now. We've all been provided with a source of income, with an opportunity to provide for our families, to provide, to earn a paycheck. God has given us all of our jobs as resources. He is our source. So when I come to work, I may be employed by the postal service, but that is not my source. I may have supervisors and managers within the postal service that oversee what I do or how my job is done, but they're not my boss. I have one boss and he's in heaven. Same, same one that knit me together, same one that's called me to do things like this, speak on certain things. So he's called me to work and do my job as on to the Lord. And no matter what you do, no matter what your job is, you're called to do it onto the Lord as if you're doing it directly for him, not for the organization or the company that you're actually employed by. So let that sink in for a second. Because it even tells servants who are believers to work in a different manner for their masters, whether their master is a believer or not, because he's calling us, he's calling his people to represent and reflect him. So it doesn't matter what you do, do it unto the Lord. So if I worship, I worship with my whole being onto my king in heaven. If I work, I work with everything I got from the start of the day to the end of the day. I stop. I just ate my sandwich. Uh, technically, I get two 10-minute breaks and a 30-minute lunch. They take my lunch out regardless whether I actually take it or not. I skip it more often than I take it. Because I have a conviction, I guess for lack of better terms, to work at a certain level, to, to produce a certain capacity, a certain amount of work because who my, who my boss is, who my king is, who I work for, who I serve. We're called to be different. We're called to be set apart. We're called to be peculiar. We're not supposed to look like the world. We're not supposed to work like the world. We're supposed to flip the world on its head. Why do you work like that? Because I'm not working for the post office. I'm working for my Lord.
Lord. Why do you do so much? Because I don't work like I'm working to collect a check from a biz from a company. I work because I've been given the opportunity to be blessed financially by my Lord through his provision and the resource of my employment. Never look at your employer, your place of uh, employment as your source because it is not. When you look at it as your source, you will never ever attain the resources of the Most High. He is to be your source no matter what. So if he's paying you, if you collect that paycheck because of him, wouldn't you want to make sure you know, you're right inside? And you're like, no, I earned this. Thank you, Lord. First 10% is yours. Why? Because it's all his at the end of the day. You wouldn't have it if it wasn't for him. I heard a, a sermon or something once. When you do the numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. Every number is made out of those. One and zero. First and the last. So when you give 10%, you're giving the first and the last. If you give the first and the last, that means everything in the middle belongs to him. So not only do I joyfully give 10%, I also willingly surrender everything in the middle up onto him because it's his but if you call yourself a Christian if you call yourself a believer and you sandbag at work or you uh, you don't kick you don't kick it up an extra gear when you need to you don't have another speed you don't have another uh, push another drive then you're not doing it as unto the Lord and see, I've been so blessed to the point that I've, I have surrendered and dedicated my being to him. That I'll have days to the natural eye, there's no way I should be able to do the amount of work that I've done. Or there's no way I should be able to make it back by the time I need to make it back by. So all the outgoing mail gets on the truck. But I believe it's in the Psalms that says he makes my feet like hinds feet. It means he makes them nimble. Where my Lord puts his breath under my feet and carries me. Before I know what I'm done. How, how did I just do six hours worth of work in four hours? Because he equipped me, enabled me to move through in a manner that I wouldn't be able to do. Now, every situation is different. Everybody's walk, relationship, and place of employment is different. The key, the point of this whole thing is no matter what you do, Scripture says, whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. Trust Him to equip and enable you to go above and beyond. Trust him to equip and enable you to do more than you should be able to do in the natural because he'll do it supernaturally. He puts his super on your natural and bam. Trust him. Believe him. I mean... If you want to say you're a believer, but you look at your place of employment as your source instead of a resource, then you're going to miss out. <clears throat> you say you're a believer, and you don't willingly and joyfully give the first 10%, then you're going to miss out. Malachi 3.10 says, bring all the tithes into my storehouse and see that I won't open the windows of heaven and pour out more than you can handle. He'll bless us so that we can be a blessing. But he has to know that he can trust us to be blessings before we are blessed. Acts 
ask him to give you the next gear. Ask him to give you his wind under your feet. To lift you up on wings like eagles. That you would be able to go above and beyond with your job. Because it seems to me the more I'm willing to work as if I work for him and not as if I work for them, the more they're willing to just pay me however much, however many hours, however much overtime, however much double time, doesn't matter. They'll just pay. Go back out. I'm on double time. I don't care. Go. That person's cheaper than I am. Go. But do you want me to go or do you want this person to go? Go. Why? Because I have his favor on my life. I have his favor on me. <laughs> so they could easily say, oh, you're on double time. You're on overtime. You're a temporary person. You're a career person. All right, you know what? We're going to send this person. But they don't. They send me. It's one of the prophets. Eyes of the Lord was going to and fro on the face of the earth looking for somebody to stand in the gap. Couldn't find anybody. And the prophet said to him, Here I am, Lord, send me. I'll go. Here I am, Lord, send me. I'll go. Because every time I go out, there's a possibility, an opportunity to reflect and represent Jesus to somebody who needs him. And because of that, he blesses me. Not only financially, he blesses me in many, many, many ways. Many ways. I am, I am beyond blessed in most areas of my life because of my devotion to my Lord and Savior, my devotion and my desire to please my king, my master, my commanding officer. If you work outside and it gets hot, these things are super duper good and they're really hydrating too. Uh, I'm shaking it because my wife will throw them in the freezer and she'll throw it in my lunchbox so later in the day I can have like a slushy. It's really good. Uh, side note, freebie. But no, just, just think about the way that you work. If this doesn't apply to you, sweet. That means you're working how he wants you to work. But if something inside you gets stirred up, it's like, man. I don't think I work as if I work for the Lord. Go to him. Ask him. Lord. Refine my mind. Teach me how to work. As if I work for you and not as if I work for man. Teach me how to do all things unto you. That I can be pleasing in your sight, Lord. Watch what happens. Just remember, Jesus is king. If you bow now, you won't be forced to bow later. <laughs>